My name is Barbara Drew. Isaac was adopted from Bogota, Colombia. He was from the start a very active, busy, always in motion baby. Maybe a little bit of um, attention deficit, you know, that kind of thing, but extremely bright, very affectionate, happy, humorous, he's pretty witty, uh, and then that kind of changed. I mean, at home, when you're just no control, you know what I mean, no control at all, no control over anything, no control over whenever I was hungry or whenever I went to sleep. I was full of anger, you know, I, I was just full of anger. And we noticed that he started to be uh, more withdrawn. That was kind of the first clue. We didn't get that. He didn't want to come out of his room, didn't want to be with the family. I wouldn't say quiet, but um, surface level. Then we kind of noticed that he started um, his drug use with like over the counter, like my cough medicine. I think that the absence of like connection with anybody. I honestly, I didn't even look for camaraderie. I just got high. You know what I mean? I think that being a drug addict, that brought out a lot of my narcissistic tendencies, a lot of my craziness. And I think that I really used that as a crutch for a long time, a long time. I don't know about other moms of, of addicts, but you lose hope. You know, you, you say you want to have it, but you lose it. Right? It is gone because it's just disappointment and fear. You don't know if your kid's coming home or not, and you live in that pain. And then when they come home, it's like passive aggressive. They're loving you one minute only to get what they want, right? Not only do you betray pretty much everybody uh, but yourself, I think that's probably the first person you betray is yourself. I'm an opiate addict. So I've overdosed like three times. And I had my stomach pumped a few times. I say an opiate addict because that was the one thing that stood out to me. I've done everything, man, like. So I said, don't come back unless you're ready to change because we're not doing this. I woke up in a loading dock. It was pouring down rain. I had no idea how I got there. I'm just like nodded out asleep on the floor. Just looked at my arms. I looked at like myself. I was kind of disgusted with myself a little bit. There's two, two uh, like Mexican dudes and they're loading up the Coca-Cola from the truck. And they look down. Yeah, I had plenty of people look at me, you know, like that. And I was like, it was almost like my dad was looking at me. I didn't like that. Cause I, I, I've always carried anger for him. That didn't feel good. Having to feel like he was looking at me, judging me. That, uh, that hurt. So 11 days later, he knocks on our door. I open it, sort of, not even the whole way. And I, I saw my son actually want to change, right? He meant it in his heart. He had truly just come to his bottom and said, I need to change. And there was jail to jobs. <laughs> Where Isaac before was not willing to, very resistant, he just opened up and said, I will be there, Mom. I'm going to do this thing. And that's when Michael's name came up. I remember I met Mike. I remember my first thoughts. I was like, he looks like he could be my dad. I like my birth dad, but like, he looks like he could have been like my dad. And um, it's weird because he played the role of like a father and a brother, but he did it willingly. Not because like, you know, yeah, it's his job, but like, I think specifically he picked me. No one ever picked me before. That changed me. Giving my life story and the struggles that um, I had from uh, a young boy all the way up to a young young man into an adult it was just pure struggle and then i found out about tell the jobs um because i was supposed to he introduced himself with his like street name or whatever and i didn't really understand what his street name was but i told him i was like what's your real name he said isaac and he pulled his mask down and i saw isaac right and i was like 
I'm going to call you Isaac because that's your name. He had that facade off the gate. That's who he wanted me to see, but he was so willing to allow me to see him. It was almost as if no one had ever asked him, who, who are you? So I think it's, it's really easy to love Isaac, but it's hard for Isaac to love you. So the journey started off with self-worth. And that touched me in a way because my whole life it was just, I felt worthless. And the, every decision that I made only led me deeper into worthlessness. But Isaac, um, Isaac just touched me. He'll say that I blessed him, but I'm gonna say that he blessed me. I think because Isaac, Isaac was willing to love me in a way that I didn't really know that I kind of needed. I think it was all, it was all just a willingness to see me, the same way I was willing to see him. And I've, I've never really experienced something like that, especially when I'm supposed to be the leader, you know what I mean? But um, I think that, I think things work out like that because they're supposed to. All Isaac had was a willingness. He had no skill set necessarily, but his willingness excelled him into actually becoming one of the most crafty people that we have. So Isaac had always had vision and he always had kind of an imagination. So he could see things and how they would play out, which is an asset on the construction site. And right now we're involved with courts and construction. So we take a team about seven, seven young men out there but what I, what I noticed about Isaac is his leadership ability to be willing brought the other guys along. So even if you didn't want to follow Isaac, the fact that he was willing and they gave him responsibilities, these other, these other youngsters wanted, wanted some responsibility too. So he was leading them, didn't even know it. My name is Rod Cortson and I run a construction company called Cortson Construction. But Isaac, you could tell he had leadership qualities in him. And so I'd just watch him, you know, I'd watch him from the distance, I'd watch him work. And uh, because I think of what he's learned here and what he's learned from, you know, his friends, Michael and those guys, he just gave it his, I could tell he was giving it his all. Still don't know what all his struggles are. And really, frankly, I don't care, you know, what his past is, but seeing who he is now, I can't even picture what I hear the stories of who Isaac was because he's become a leader. We hired him direct. Life is about people and we didn't get where we got on our own. Somebody supported me. Somebody gave me what I didn't deserve. Somebody gave me not just one shot, they gave me a million shots until something clicked. But if we don't have that financial support, then it goes away. I would just encourage, remember there's a need. And Pray about it, be a part of it. Because I think that uh, a lot of times we just look at our own life and that's all we concern ourselves with. Um, and that's just, that's unjust. Especially if we wanna have something to say about what's going on in the world and do nothing.